You know when someone tells you there's something cool nearby that you didn't know about uh, and you don't really believe it at first, like, uh, right, 20 minutes away, in the mountains, incredible donkey farm. Donkeys? I bloody love donkeys. Who doesn't love a donkey? Or, right, next street over, amazing Mexican restaurant, life-changing tacos. Tacos, no way, everybody loves tacos, don't they? Tacos, yeah. Or, right, next town over, an actual mummy, better than Egypt. No way, a decomposed mummy, everyone loves a de what? Turns out I don't have to spend my pocket money to go to Egypt to see a mummy. There's one just an hour down the road. And this isn't just a mummy who's been wrapped in bandages and chucked in a box. This mummy was actually a person who killed themselves in a deliberate act, a torturous act of self-mummification. Now I'll admit, I've always wanted to see a mummy ever since I was a kid reading about the ancient Egyptians and of course the infamous pharaoh Tutankhamun. But as someone who hasn't considered turning themselves into a mummy uh, recently, I find it quite difficult to understand what led someone to actually go and do such a thing. So today we're off to Fukushima to get some answers. We're going on a day trip to explore the local area, but above all, to find out why someone would turn themselves into a mummy. Didn't think I'd be saying that in a video. <laughs> the tour group we're joining in Fukushima is right in the middle of Sendai in Tokyo. And our first stop of the day is a temple hidden away in a cedar oak forest. In a scene that looks like something straight out of Indiana Jones. So there's 466 of these statues. They cost $2,000 to make and they're donated by people who want to kind of get some good luck, get some good fortune. I almost see it as bribery, some sort of religious bribery, but uh, some of them look quite new. In fact, the, the newest one was only made just three days ago and put up here, but I love the way each one of them has its own kind of unique, special kind of characteristics. But over here, come on, come on, this, is, this is probably the coolest one. This guy's got his, uh, his sunglasses on, looking pretty gangster there with a giant polo. This guy has arguably the scariest face I've ever seen. There's even one over there with Beats, Beats headphones. There's, there's, there's no escape from Beats these days, is there? Beats by Dre, bloody everywhere. The temple has a limit of 500 statues. So if you fancy yourself some good luck, there's still time for you to commission a statue of yourself looking like Kim Jong-il or an amazing spinach face. It's probably the best way you could spend $2,000. I'd love to make my own, but I don't have $2,000 laying around. Our next stop is a world away from the forest of cheeky statues. Or at least, it certainly looks like it. Down in the depths of Fukushima's most impressive caves. So we're in this hall now, in this giant cave, and it's 29 metres tall, 25 metres in diameter. And it's incredible to think this was all formed just by water coming down and dissolving all the lime. But my first thought was, fuck, I hope one of those limestone spikes doesn't fall down on my head. That would be a pretty bad ending to the afternoon. But uh, apparently it took 80 million years for this to form, so that's quite reassuring. I don't think they're going to be coming down in a hurry. I think the best way to describe this cave is uh, it's like being in an alien's stomach. Imagine you've been eaten by a really big alien. This is probably what it would look like. Uh, <laughs> I've gone a bit delusional. Being down in a cave for the last hour has driven me slightly mad. I may have lost my mind, but perhaps I can be forgiven, considering the randomness of what I discovered down in the cave. So we're in this limestone cave, and there's this big illumination, balloon art, they call it. Lots of, there's, there's hundreds of little balloons all lit up. And then over here, uh, there's just randomly uh, a space shuttle. Space shuttle and spacemen. I suppose nothing says limestone cave quite like a space shuttle. In there, what? Uh, I don't know what the relevance is. After the caves, we were given some kimonos to wear for the rest of the day and headed off to welcome in some good luck for the new year. I might not have $2,000, but I can do the next best thing. These small objects are everywhere in Japan, 
They're called Daruma, and they're modelled on Bodhidharma, the founder of Zen Buddhism. Daruma dolls are seen as a symbol of perseverance and good luck, and today I'm painting my own and trying to make it look good. Such skill and craftsmanship. Everyone's looks quite good except mine. And I just ruined it. It looked really good. I had like a beautiful little face and then I just got a bit carried away really. Shit. It's it's beyond repair now. Don't maybe maybe I'll just turn it into a cat or something. It's just getting worse, isn't it? Still, it's unique in its own special way. The mummy could be found in a small town called Asakawa, in the Kinkyuzan Kansuji Temple, sat upright in the very position he passed away in. I don't want to stare at it too long because I'm going to have some serious nightmares tonight. It's a little bit creepy to think that was a person once. So 330 years ago, this monk decided to make the ultimate sacrifice. It's kind of, it's kind of like suicide, but maybe much more difficult than suicide. Disciplined suicide is the only way I can think of describing it. In Japanese, the mummy is called Sokushinbutsu, which roughly translates as flesh idol. His name is Yute, and 330 years ago he was a Buddhist monk who followed a sect of Buddhism which practiced the art of self-mummification. The practitioners believed that this wasn't an act of suicide, but actually a form of enlightenment. At the age of 92, the local townsfolk were infected with a terrible disease, and Yute believed he could help people suffering by becoming a Sokushinbutsu, and in this form he would be able to pray for the town for an eternity. The first stage of becoming a flesh idol was to rid your body of all water and fat by limiting food intake to just a few nuts until you're little more than a skeleton. Only then are you ready for the next stage of locking yourself away. So this is the stone coffin that Yute sat in for 15 days. And every day, 15 days, he'd ring a little bell to uh, let the people on the outside know that he was alive. Uh, and then when the bell stopped and he was dead, they let him sit there for three years and three months, brought him out, and then he looked like that. But if you look at Yute's mummified body, you can still see that he's got some flesh intact. He's not all just bone. And that's a symbol that he's succeeded in becoming a Sokushinbutsu. And where I'm standing right now, he's looking right at me and it's really creeping me out. I have some serious nightmares tonight. Ugh. This Buddha here was actually placed on top of this stone coffin to make sure he couldn't get out. A minute ago I was looking at that and thinking, oh that's beautiful, but now I look at that and I think that kind of locked him in there and that kind of makes me a bit ugh. Apparently a lot of people went through with this procedure but not many actually succeeded because they just couldn't bear it. But old Yute, he pulled it off and now look at him. He's got his very own, very own shrine. What a lucky guy. At just one hour north of Tokyo by bullet train, it's a pretty easy region to explore. If you need somewhere to stay after, there's loads of good resorts in the region. We stayed at the nearby Yahataya Inn with some excellent food and hot springs. I've put the full itinerary in the description box below, including the place in Kordiyama City where we were given the stylish kimonos to wear during our trip. I'm off now to write a book on how to paint, so anyone can paint with the same skill and precision as myself. Many thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time. But if you look at the, if you look at Yute's mummified body, you can still see that he's got some flesh intact. He's not all just bone. Uh, and that is a symbol that he succeeded in becoming a Sodit. Sokushinbutsu. And that's a symbol that he's succeeded in becoming a Sokushinbutsu.